So your gaming channel has unlocked the community tab, congratulations. But now you might be wondering, how should I use the community tab? What types of posts get the most promotion from the algorithm? Well, I spent over a month testing the community tab on my channel and I discovered some pretty cool secrets that I haven't really heard anyone else talk about. So in this video, I wanna reveal all of my findings. G'day, my name is Marcus Jones. Let's get stuck into this. Now I want you to listen, I want you to listen closely because the community tab has some hidden powers. So many creators just completely miss its full potential. Firstly, it can allow you to stay top of mind. It gives you the opportunity to have more touch points with your viewers. And the more touch points you have, the better. See, when people see you everywhere, not only does it help you stay top of mind and help you stay relevant in their consciousness, but it also breeds trust. And that's one of the reasons why massive brands, you know, like Red Bull, Coca-Cola, Colgate, like everyone knows who those brands are, but they're always pushing out a ton of advertisements, right? On TV, on social media, et cetera, et cetera, because they want to stay top of mind. They want you to trust them. And then next time you're feeling like a beverage, first thing that's going to come to mind is going to be like Coca-Cola, right? The next thing is that the community tab allows you to build more rapport with your current audience for a relatively low amount of effort. So normally in the past, before you unlock the community tab, if you wanted to build and further your relationship with your viewers, you would have had to have posted a video. That's pretty much it. But now you can basically post community tab posts. You can interact with your own audience and it's so much less effort than actually having to go out there and post a video. So if you want to connect and engage with your audience on a daily basis and build a stronger relationship with them, instead of having to post daily videos now, you can just post daily community tab posts. Now, the other thing is that it allows you to conduct audience research and get real data on the content and type of content that people might be interested in. So obviously there are polls, but you can also ask people direct questions. And that's if you have a specific question about a type of content you want to create or maybe even a question about a particular thumbnail or title you want to use, you can turn to your community tab and get some real insights from your audience as to what it is that they want to see, what it is they would click on, what it is they would notice or whatever it is that you're trying to find out from them. And not only is that going to help you, but it actually helps them as well. It helps build your audience with them and, and basically do the two points we mentioned earlier because it helps them feel like they're a bit of an insider. They get in a bit of a behind the scenes look. And the other cool thing about the community tab is it allows allows you to just promote stuff. So if you do it right, not only is it gonna allow you to say, promote your own videos or promote videos from your friends, but it also can allow you to do uh, and promote external things like links to websites or affiliate products or services or things like that that you can actually use to monetize your audience, which obviously helps provide you with the resources and time you need to be able to create more content. And in fact, brands actually nowadays, I've been getting an increasing number of these requests. They'll actually request to pay you money in order to post just on your community tab without you having to actually put ads in your videos. So it's really valuable that way. And the last point is that it helps you actually reach completely new viewers at times because you can reach new audiences with your community tab post. It has organic reach. People outside of your current subscriber base, your current community can actually still find and interact with your community tab posts when the algorithm will promote their posts to them, say on their, on their YouTube homepage. Now this isn't guaranteed. This isn't something that always happens, but it's something that can can definitely help you increase your reach on the platform if you're creating high quality content. So basically in summary, you want to use the community tab and you want to use it properly because at this point, there are just so many benefits as to how easy it is to create community tab posts. And once you discover this stuff I'm going to share with you in this video, you're going to absolutely kill it because there is a right way and a wrong way to use the community tab. Now I've done a ton of experimentation and I'm going to reveal exactly what I discovered. So you can basically master the community tab for your channel. But real quick, before we dive into that, I want to help you understand some of the fundamentals that you really need to know if you're going to be using the community tab, because we don't want to put the cart before the horse or like polish a turd or anything like that, right? So you want to think about your community tab as a mini social media platform. So I want you to think of it like a dumbed down version of Facebook almost within your YouTube channel. So you should start treating it as if it is a mini platform within YouTube itself. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make right off the bat is that they don't treat it like this. Instead, they treat it like some cheap way to get a few extra eyeballs on their latest videos. And basically their community tab just ends up being full of straight plugs. And firstly, plugging a video directly in the community tab doesn't work very well for the reasons I'm going to mention in a minute. But even without that factor in mind, put yourself in the viewer's shoes for a moment. Like remember when I told you to treat the community tab like it is a platform in and of itself? Like imagine you were following a Facebook account and all that Facebook account did was post promotions. Chances are you're gonna get sick of that account real quick and you're either going to completely ignore them or you're going to unfollow them because they're not providing you with any value. So you need to remember this analogy when you are posting on your community tab 
provide value. Always provide value to your viewers. If you get nothing else from this video, let it be this. Like when you are posting on the community tab, think about your viewers and how those posts are actually going to interest or satisfy them. So that brings us to the question, what kind of content should you actually post? Well, again, you want to think about it like a social media account. So like think about the kinds of things you would post on say Instagram or Facebook. If you were trying to engage with people who had similar interests to the people who are watching your YouTube videos on social media, like Instagram and Facebook, like what kinds of posts would those people be interested in? Or you can even go out there and research and see what's already out there and get some data on that. Based on my research and testing, here are some general top tips and tricks and things that you want to keep in mind if you want to maximize your ROI that you get from your community tab. So firstly, because you should try and post once per day. Once per day is the thing I would recommend, mainly because it is the maximum amount you can post per day without hurting your reach. So I've found that if you post more than one post in 24 hours, it basically kills the reach on both of those posts, um, which isn't really that much of a good thing. So posting once per day gives you the maximum amount of touch points, the maximum amount of connection and opportunity to reach more people without hurting your community tab posts. The other thing you want to bear in mind that's super important is the first line of copy from your community tab post needs to be good. And when I say copy, I mean words. So when you're writing the description of your community tab post, regardless of whether it's a poll or a video or just a text post, whatever, that first line, preferably even the first couple of words needs to hook people in just like a YouTube video. You probably hear a lot of people talking about you need a hook at the start of your video to grab people in. Same thing with a community tab post. You need a hook to grab people and interest them enough to keep reading. The next thing that you should bear in mind is the actual quality of the material within your post is a must. And when I say material, I'm talking about like the core content of your actual channel, right? So regardless of whether you're posting a poll, a video, an image, whatever it is, you need to put yourself in your viewers' shoes and try to think about whether or not the actual core or content, the material of that post is actually going to interest them. Or for many of us gamers, we are our target audience, which is kind of helpful. So we can basically just look at the post and think, hey, if I saw this post being posted from another creator within my niche, would I find it interesting? Would I engage with it? If the answer is yes, it might be a good post. The answer is no, it might not be such a good post. If you're still stuck and you have no idea, something you can do is you can go and turn to sites like Reddit and you can just go to relevant subreddits to your niche and figure out what kind of posts are trending there. And that can give you some kind of example as to what people within your community in general might be interested in. By the way, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it if you like the video. It helps me get this information out there. Plus it boosts my self-esteem. Anyway, back to the video. Now, another thing that you want to bear in mind is your copy is actually key. So when you're actually writing your copy, you do want to hook people in, but also the remainder of that copy, you would try to keep it a bit interesting as well. A lot of people don't put very much effort into actually writing their community tab posts, but when you bear in mind the fact that the description of your community tab posts is actually quite a prominent feature of your community tab posts, unlike say your description on your video, which is important, but not as many people will read it. You want to try and write them intentionally. You don't have to be a professional writer or anything like that, but I see a lot of people paying like zero effort to their writing in their community tab posts, and you don't want to be that person because if people do engage with your post and read that description, you want them to have a relatively good experience with that post, right? And the other thing you want to do is to make the post more viewer centric. And so what I mean by that is that you can do things like ask questions or ask for the viewer's feedback or try and talk in terms of the viewer's interests or wants or desires or their excitements or whatever it is, instead of making it all about you because people care about themselves more than anyone else most of the time. And so if you're able to make it viewer centric, then you're generally, in my experience, going to get a lot more engagement than if you're just making the posts all about you. An example of something that you probably shouldn't do or that I see a lot of people doing is apologizing for posting a video late or for like plugging a video and saying, hey, I've got a new video coming tomorrow. Things like that, often they don't do so well because they're not very viewer centric and they don't add all that much value to the viewer. However, if you can find a way to create messaging that is going to be valuable to the viewer, then again, you're going to be more likely to get higher engagement. That leads us to probably one of the biggest questions people have and that is what type of post should you actually create because there are three main types of posts you can select there's actually four types of posts but we'll get into that in a sec but there are three types of posts and some of these posts get more promotion from the algorithm almost every time than others regardless of the engagement they get and if you've ever watched any other videos on this topic from any other gurus you probably would have heard a lot of gurus talk about polls and I agree still that polls do get a lot of engagement but I think it's hard to say that polls definitely are 
are overall the best type of post to create because I guess the engagement ratings you're looking at for polls is they get a lot of impressions and they get a lot of people voting on them. And while that's good to look at, that doesn't necessarily fully encapsulate the quality of the traffic, right? If a lot of these people who vote in polls don't actually pay that much attention to your post, they just kind of tap on the poll just to see what the numbers are and what other people are voting on, then that's a lower quality of traffic. That type of person who's attracted to that kind of thing is going to be less engaged and lower quality traffic, as we just mentioned, than maybe the type of person who would engage with another type of post. But in some circumstances, you do care about quality over quantity. So what I did was I created four posts and I dripped them out onto my channel. Now the context and everything I did in these posts is exactly the same because in every circumstance, I included the exact same copy. So in the description of all of them, all of the posts are like, please like this post if you see it in all caps. After that, it says, I'm trying to test something out. I might make a video on the results of this test. Thanks a lot for your help. And what's interesting about this is that not only do the posts have the exact same copy, aside from them actually being a different category or type of post, but we can actually get some sort of idea as to the quality of traffic interacting with these posts by looking at how many likes each post gets. Because if the traffic is high quality, then they will have read the description of the post and then a percentage of them will go down and actually like the post. They'll actually interact and respond to my call to action. And then what we can do is we can actually measure the number of people who took the action that I called them to take. I decided to do that as a controlled test and I created those four posts. I dripped them out onto my channel, but before I dived into them and decided to cut it there, I decided to create another test just to try and improve the quality of the data. So I did one more, pretty much exactly the same. I did a video post, a text post, an image post and a poll. And this time I tweaked two things. And in the video post, what I tweaked was I changed the particular video I was promoting because I didn't want there to be skewed results based on say one video having a higher click through rate than the other. And I also changed the image. So in the previous round of testing I did, I had an image with a very attention grabbing text and it also had a call to action within the image itself. It said, read the post description, please. But I wanted to see if there was gonna be a difference if I had just used a random image that didn't actually call people to action to read the post description. So on this version, what I did was I just posted literally a blank photo, which is just the background of what I had posted previously. And so then what I did, as you can probably see from the timestamps on these posts, was I let them gather a bit of data for a while and then I jumped in to do some analysis. And and the results were really, really fascinating. So what I've actually done is I've put all of this into a pivot table for you to have a look at. And what's really fascinating if we go through this data is what we see being the winners. So the first one we look at is we can see the average impressions. We can see that polls definitely has the most impressions. So on average, the, each poll got about 4,157 impressions. Then it was the image posts then it was the text posts, and then it was the videos posts. So polls wins here with images not too far behind, but definitely polls the winner there. We've also got on the next one, the average posts like. And what's really interesting here is that the text posts actually comes in at number one, followed by the image post, which is pretty close behind. Then polls is a decent way behind that. And then video is all the way at the bottom again. Then lastly, we can see the average post likes. So this is how many likes each post got on, on average. And what's really fascinating here is that the image came number one, then the poll, then the text, and then the video. I think overall we could say for a fact that yes, polls get more impressions. That's without question. However, it looks like images get the highest quality of traffic. Overall, the actual action I wanted people to take, which was for them to like, the winner is actually the image. It seems like if you're wanting to create a post that's going to go out there and reach a higher uh, amount of traffic, then you're looking at a poll. But if you're looking for a slightly higher quality traffic, don't discount image posts or even trying text posts. Before you leave, I wanna give you a quick power tip. And that is overall, I've actually found that there's a specific type of image slash text post that works the best. So in my experimentation, I use static images because that's what most people use. However, I've also posted hundreds of community tab posts just on other channels and on GYGC channel and all that kind of thing. And what I've seen is that a GIF with the text is actually the most effective at driving high quality traffic. What that would mean is that instead of just having the image being a static, you would actually create a GIF and upload it to that post. And that extra movement, it seems to capture a bit more attention and just get you better results overall. So now you've mastered the community tab though, you might be interested in just mastering your gaming channel in general. And if you are, I've got a video on screen where I literally walk you through my step-by-step -step process I would recommend to grow your entire gaming channel. It's the process I've used to personally get over 20 million views on my gaming channels. But not only that, it's the process that I've taught to my students and channels I've worked with and it's worked time and time again to generate hundreds of millions of views. Check it out.